Is that the rule of three? I don't know what that is. It's, it should be establish, reaffirm, and then you kill it on the third. But you can do it on the fourth. Um, he was tall, he was handsome, he was an idiot. He was tall, he was handsome, he was uh, splendid, he was an idiot. He was tall, he was handsome, he was splendid, he could play football, he was an idiot. You can, you can do it to five, I think you can do it to You know, after a while people might get bored, but you can keep reaffirming before you twist. I am Lord Vader. Everyone challenges me to a fight to the death. Lord Ve Darth Vader, I'm Darth Vader. Lord Ve Sir Lord Vader, Sir Lord Darth Vader. Lord Darth, Sir Lord, Lord Vader of Cheem. Sir Lord Baron Von Vederham. The Death Star, I've run the Death Star. What's the Death Star? This is the Death Star. You're in the Death Star. I run this star. This is a star. This is a fucking star. I run it. I'm your boss. You're Mr. Stevens. No, I'm... Who is Mr. Stevens? He's head of catering. I'm not head of catering. I am Vader. I can kill catering with a thought. What? I can kill you all. I can kill me with a thought. Just... Fuck, I'll get a tray. Fuck it. theory was like a scientific theory you have a theory then see if you can prove it humor is human it's not national there is no French sense of humor there's no British sense of humor no American sense of humor no Australian sense of humor no Indian sense of humor it can quite easily be proven is the British sense of humor is it Python or is it um, Jim Davidson you tell me well exactly so it can't be it, there's obviously a few different senses of humor in there and I'm putting my money where my mouth is, doing gigs in French. It all leads around to, I thought I should do it in French, I should do it in German, um, which I did at school. I want to do Russian, Arabic, because I was born in an Arabic country. Um, Spanish, Mandarin's right at the end of the list. I don't know if I'll get to all of them, but I hopefully will. Hey, bienvenue à mon spectacle, but I can see why the French would like the show, anyway, because there, it is a, it, there's a lot of philosophy in your, in your, yeah. in what you do. It's a humanist yeah, kind of yeah. show. J'ai décidé, j'ai aussi décidé, il n'y a pas de Dieu. Si vous êtes religieux, je suis désolé, mais <laughs> il n'est pas là. Je pense qu'il n'est pas là. J'ai deux preuves de ça. Ah, hein? une petite question, Dieu, est-ce que tu es là? Non. <laughs> tu habites dans le, dans le, sur le toit, je pense, pas ici. Avec un, je pense que s'il y a un dieu, il faut avoir une un voix plus en bas. Pas, oui. Si Dieu a une voix comme ça, si, imaginez si Dieu... Oui, je suis Dieu. <laughs> tu es Dieu de, de l'univers Oui. Oui, c'est vrai. J'habite ici. Non. So you were on the street before you were in the clubs? So. Yeah, five years on the street, which is... Five years? Yeah, four and a half, five years. That gives me, that gives me a huge edge. Roberto! Eduardo! Hunger! Hey! I thought it looked really easy. It looked wonderful. You stand on the street, you do stuff, everyone laughs and laughs, that gives you cash. Do if you more. stay back there, we're going to do the show right behind no, the right. It's very hard to hold their attention because they can do anything else. There's no walls. They didn't pay there. They've got to pay at the end if they pay. And so you have to do stuff saying, we're going to kill this kid. And then they laugh. The idea of killing the kid, it's like Tom and Jerry. You can, you can threaten massive violence and they just laugh their socks off. It's, the really, it's an odd thing. Um, I ended up getting up on a huge unicycle and trying to escape from a pair of manacles on a huge unicycle. My name is Eddie Izzard. It's a rather strange name. It's got two sides of it. Are you ready? I certainly am, old chap. Are you steady? Yes, this is an enormous build-up, isn't it? Go! OK. Right. I'd been in the comedy clubs and the stand-ups were revered and speciality acts like us were treated like, oh, you're just the idiot who's coming on in between the people with the words. And I just thought, I've got to be on that side of the fence. On the Boulevard de Sex, là-bas. It's interesting, the Boulevard de Sex. Magazine de Sex, Magazine de Sex, Pharmacy. Magazine de Sex, Magazine de Sex, Pharmacy, Pharmacy. It's the same person. And sex toy, you have a sex toy, merci. 
action, merci. Elle est dans le foire aussi. Hé, hey, mais mec! Vous avez les cas? C'est les mêmes, les mêmes jeux. Le brosse à dents et les sex toys, même chose. Il faut utiliser l'imagination. Ouais, ouais, ouais. Il faut apprendre les langues. Et euh, c'est bien. Je veux que, j'aimerais que... Je veux que tu viennes ce soir. À condition soir que... Spectacle. Pour que, avant que, à, qui on, à condition que... Pour que j'ai un... Euh, un... Euh... Une cravate Oui, yes, une cravate. Une cravate. Une cravate. Une cravate Une crevette. C'est une crevette. C'est une you really do believe that comedy is universal, do you? That we can find a way of communicating with, with everyone. I'm really trying to formulate my philosophy on life, my attitude towards life. So, melting pot, great, I think that's a positive idea. I think that's the future for us. I think Europe should be a massive Manhattan. I think the world should be a massive Manhattan. The idea of everyone working together, different languages, different skills, and I think it should touch get through to progressive audiences all around the world. They're out there, and I can go and find them. Can I tell you guys jokes? Can I tell you jokes today, sir? These are good jokes. Can I tell you jokes today, miss? America invented stand-up, you know. Stand-up and jazz are the, are the two great American art forms of, of the 20th century. They, that's, it's theirs. Can I tell you guys jokes today? All right. American is the mother tongue of stand-up comedy for me, you know, for my uh, my favorite, favorite comedians are, are, are from the American tradition. I'll do two jokes for 50 cents. You got 25 cents jokes? I'll do one joke for 25 cents. How about 12 cents? Uh, I, I won't tell you any jokes for 12 cents, but you can give you it to me. can't tell me a joke for 12 I cents? I can't. Okay. Office workers are always doing stand-up bits at their Christmas parties. It's, it's very much part of their, um, their, their, their cultural upbringing. I tell you jokes today, miss? Yeah? Come on over. Did you see the royal couple's gonna visit a rodeo when they come to the US? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't care about the show. They've just never seen poor people in real life. Thank you. It's not a collaborative art. It's very uh, individualistic, and I think that's also why it's a very popular American form, is that the writer and the performer are the same person, and there's no interference. It's all yours, and you stand or you fall on it. It's sort of has a little bit of that cowboy spirit in it, too. The advantage of New York City is that there's a lot of opportunity for stage time, and no comedian can become a comedian without access to those precious minutes on stage. The comedians that come out of New York, there's a style, for sure. You gotta deliver, you know, you can't, uh, you can't mess around too much here. It's always innovative, it's always moving forward, it's a little more aggressive. I hate the first spot. It's awful. It's the sacrificial lamb. I spent a little bit too much time at Starbucks for the last five hours, and uh, it's fun over there. You know, it's fun. Like when you give your order, and sometimes they ask for your name. This morning, I gave him my Hebrew name. I was like, I'll have a decaf latte. Sure, can I get your name? Yeah, Elazar Yaakov Ben Shlomo. <laughs> She's like, um, do you have a nickname or something? <laughs> well, my friends call me Jew Bastard. <laughs> I'm not writing that on the cup, sir. <laughs> All right, fine, then you could use my American Indian name. Puts nothing in tip jar. <laughs> a minute later, I hear, one decaf latte for a Jew Bastard. <laughs> I love the notion of writing a joke and then going up and telling it, and it's just that immediate boom, boom, no notes from idiot network people, and it was just like, there is nothing like it. And every accent has a weird relationship to one letter. Like the Russians, the Russian accent, that's the letter Y. They take the letter Y and they put it between every other letter. Take any sentence, like, this traffic is unbelievable, they'd be like, this traffic is unbelievable. <laughs> 
I can't not to be a idiot. <laughs> We've been sitting here for 15 minutes. The Israeli accent, they take M's and put it not between every other letter, but between every other word. Em, I want them, twem, go em, twem, get them, and them. What do you want, a bag of M&M's? What the hell are you talking about? Comedy really, to me, feels like playing hooky from school. You just, you can be funny. You can be the funny guy, the thing that's different from all the rest of the, the straight stuff that's going on. I've got my wife, I've got two little girls, and two girl cats. And me. <laughs> Just like I dreamed of when I was a little boy. <laughs> I used to sit alone at night and think to myself, I can't wait till I get rid of all my friends and just move into a house filled with girls. Just a home filled with emotion and eye-flashing mood tantrums and a hatred of everything I enjoy. <laughs> It all comes from me and, you know, my life. So every time, every place that I am and everything that I'm going through, it kind of reflects that, you know. Now I'm, I'm in the middle of being a new parent and living in New York City. It's a little scary when they have nightmares. They come in the middle of the night and just stand at the foot of my bed. That's terrifying. Because they want to hear comforting things from their father, like, you'll be okay, honey. But when you get woken up out of a dead sleep, by a tiny, screaming, crying shadow person. Your reaction is more like, what are you? When you watch a really good comic and he's just being, it seems like he's just telling a story and just being natural and there's jokes in there. There's jokes in all of it. Now she has two reasons to be afraid. One, whatever weird dream she had and now the giant man in his underpants pinning her to the ground. <laughs> Leave my family alone. <laughs> Everything comes from stand-up. You know, being a comedian is almost like getting your bachelor's degree, where you can go off and do anything else after that, that a lot of people become writers. I've spent the past two years looking for my ex-girlfriend's killer. But no one will do it. <laughs> like, my girlfriend now is great. My girlfriend now is awesome. If I had to nitpick, I'd say sometimes she's like a little bit too sensitive, you know? Like the other day she got her hair cut got two inches trimmed off of her hair, and then came home and cried about it for two hours over a haircut. I couldn't believe it. Finally, I went to her, I said, baby, what are you so upset about? It's just a haircut. I'm the one that's got to find a new girlfriend. <laughs> I will work you know, for months to find a joke about breast cancer. You know, something that I can make people laugh at. It's the worst thing imaginable. That's the challenge. And that's where you get that great tension where the laugh is just this guttural, you know, you don't want to laugh at it, but you have to. Did you guys have a good Father's Day last weekend? I enjoyed it. My, uh, my dad's been having a hard time lately. Keeps on losing his keys, you know? Literally can't hang on to a set of car keys to save his life. And he's tried everything too. Little hook next to the door, little bowl next to his bed. One of those keychains makes a noise when you whistle. Nothing worked. So finally this year, for Father's Day, the whole family chipped in and we put him in a home. <laughs> when they killed Bin Laden, they found porn on his computers. And I'm dying to know what he was watching. Because I have to know if Bin Laden and I had any crossover titles. <laughs> Which would either make me really creepy or him a little cooler than I thought he was. <laughs> uh, he was in that shitty apartment. He had no air conditioning, uh, uh, no uh, cell phone, no internet connection. Three wives, 23 children. You know who called the SEALs? He did. <laughs> Yeah, I know where Bin Laden is. He's looking into a mirror, crying again. He's got three PMSing women at the same time. I'll give you the exact address. Just promise to shoot wife number two first. Oh.